your mom used to go to the video store and re-record vid- videos, movies. I kind of remember that. She had two VCRs. Yes. And then she would record, so she would pirate record. And then she kept this enormous library of movies. I and that. she would rent the most bonkers stuff. Like crazy horror movies, weird movies. But I think she just went through every movie at that little video store on Pacific Avenue. And felt the need to record them all. All of them. And I guess that was breaking the law. It was, yeah. <laughs> your, your gra- my grandmother, your mom was a rebel. Wow. Yeah, pirating videos. But that's what she did. It's too bad we don't have that anymore. What, videos? Videos. Blockbuster? Yeah, Blockbuster. Yeah, I like, you know, you had to sort of leave your home. Oh, yeah. And uh, talk to the guy who always knew movie. You could talk to him about what was out, what was new, because, you know, he'd seen them all. I don't ever remember anyone working in Blockbuster that was not a movie nut. They I movies. think I, it made me realize that I need a curated selection. If you go onto Netflix or Hulu or any of these platforms, they're just too many. There are too many. So when you went to the video store, there were the staff recommendations. There were the new releases. There would be more copies of what they anticipated would be big rentals. Yeah. There was there were foreign films, and these were all sectioned, sectioned. off. And then the, which I never knew existed until somebody told me. I never knew what the curtain was in the back. This was in uh, Wildwood. Oh, you're going there, huh? Going right to yeah, the triple X. <laughs> I didn't know. We just talked about sex last episode. I, we're going right to sex no, again. I'm not going to sex, but I didn't know. So I said, you know, what's in the to the kid, right? Who I'm embarrassing, and I don't even know that I'm. I said, what's uh, what kind of what's going on in the back? And of course, he had to tell me, and I was like, oh, oh, I didn't know. Now I know. Now you know. It's really interesting. Is we went from Blockbuster, where you could go in, have an experience, maybe while you were out, do something else other than get a movie, talk to some people. Do you remember they sold food, too? They sold popcorn and candy. They sold buckets. Yeah. And in the bucket was the popcorn that you would pop. And you could get a rental with it. Exactly. Exactly. So smart. Yeah, I remember that. So they went from Blockbuster to whatever, the Red Box. Yeah. So they were moving you slowly out of their store into your own little world. Into a kiosk. Until then, the Red Box didn't exist. And you could just do it all from home. It does. Redbox does exist still in in more rural areas, even in some cities. But Redbox does exist. Yeah, because there's there's nowhere, no there's nowhere else to go. There's nowhere else to go. And the there's no broadband. Oh, uh, so the Wi Fi or whatever your the internet is. Yeah, bad. believe it or not, there's still a lot of this country who can't get reliable Wi Fi. So Wow. They I wonder how suffering they are or are they actually doing quite well? I think well? a study should be done on how well they're all <laughs> they're doing. They're probably doing they're great. Probably thriving. They're probably healthy. <laughs> I am obsessively not looking at our twelve pound <laughs> podcast Instagram page while they're doing great. <laughs> right. Oh, well I've goodness. got some good news. I like good news. The good news is that your horoscope says <gasps> from the New York Post dot com. That the sun moves into the most dynamic area of your chart a few days from now. So start making plans and make them big. Picture in your mind the kind of life you want to be enjoying by the end of the year, then make it happen. What was the first part? The next few days? Yep. So start making plans, make them big, and then make it happen. Okay. So. Will do. The onus is on you, though. Is that what it says? <laughs> no. That's you made what, that that's part what's you don't, don't ad lib. But that's what it's inferring. <laughs> Mine is most of your worries have no basis in reality. And what occurs over the next 24 hours will make that blindingly clear. If it's true that your thoughts create your world, and it is, then it's about time you looked at life in a more positive way. Well, that sounds like a coaching Episode. It was a coaching horoscope. I like that horoscope. Mm-hmm. I read that and I was like, okay, I'm not going to worry so much. Absolutely true. Your thoughts. You are your thoughts. I, I, we are. Mm-hmm. We are. You know what else we are? We are the 12 Pound Podcast. For sure. And, and welcome to episode seven. I'm your co-host, Robert. I'm here with my mom, Bobby, who just discovered uh, the dirty section of the video store. Not just. After the video no, no, store. Actually, actually, it was uh, 45 years ago. <laughs> I feel like the dirty section should be something that should come back. The dirty section. The dirty section. The, you know the dirty section of the grocery store, like in the back where everything comes in? The deep sale stuff is like the tasty cakes that have been kind of partially opened. That's the in the, that's in the dirty that's section. That's the dirty section. I want to remind everyone this is a podcast about life's changes and how we hope to help you face them through our shared stories and experiences as well as yours. We have been having a great time doing this. As I said, this is our seventh episode. We have been up on the boardwalk. And we have been here in our home studio and really enjoying this. So, hi, Mom. 
Hi, Robert. I am also thrilled that we are still working with Maury's Piers. Before we get started, we just want to tell you once again that Maury's Piers, located on the boardwalk in Wildwood, New Jersey, is a classic seaside amusement park, family owned and operated since 1969. If you haven't been to Maury's Piers, what are you waiting for? Visit them at Surfside Pier, featuring the Ocean Oasis Water Park and Beach Club at 25th Avenue, Mariner's Landing Pier, featuring Raging Waters Water Park at Scallinger Avenue, and Adventure Pier at Spencer Avenue. So get up there. Yeah, Do your thing. It's a lot of fun. We were actually just up there last night and uh, we had a kind of a fun conversation about how my five year old <laughs> granddaughter is um, could possibly, you know, could possibly be on the roulette wheel uh, 20 years from now. I'm not really sure. It's a- But the game that we noticed, and so did Margot, my daughter, who's five, and your granddaughter, was the claw game. So that's the claw. You know, the claw comes down. You can control this claw, it goes into this vat of toys, and if you're lucky enough, it picks one up drops it into the chute and voila you get a toy however that is not an easy game to win you can win there are winners but when we were up on the boardwalk with her last night she was desperately trying to win this care bear out of this claw machine so i spent i don't know what felt like seven thousand (laughs) dollars dipping into this machine and i gave up i was done so and of course this is where i'm trying i'm trying now i'm frustrated so i'm like no we're leaving let's go because she's five and she hasn't been up on the boardwalk in a while she asked me please dad please try can we try one more time okay and th- i didn't even want to try so, so why don't you try margo so she does and the first time she grabs the care bear drops it in she's thrilled it was adorable and she looked up at me with this smile and i thought she was going to say thank you dad thanks for going back for that last dollar and she said to me, Dad, don't take this personally, but you're not very good at this. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, I, I did take that very personally. Did you really? Did you? I did. You yeah. felt like a loser? I did. I felt like I uh, failed my kid. I, I feel, you know, overall I didn't, you know, because as we were leaving the boardwalk, she looked up at me down on the street and she said, you know, Dad, this is the first time I've ever left the boardwalk and I'm not crying. <laughs> She left a winner, huh? She left a winner. She, and you left co- kind of I left a kind loser. of a loser. Yeah, yeah. So once again, I'm I'm sensing a pattern here from these episodes. Virginia, I was uh, not feeling good. Somebody thought I was very uh, alone. Uh, I forgot it. That's pretty recent. Yep. And then up on the boardwalk uh, last night, uh, my daughter told me, don't take this personally, but you're not very good at that game. We were talking about when somebody says to you, don't take don't take this personal. How could you take it any other way? Obviously, you took it personally. Yeah. And it made you feel like, well, I'm not very good at this. You know, I'm kind of a, you know, kind of a loser. But people say that to people a lot. And it's uh, not a lot, but enough. Of course, I'm taking this personally. What follows, what follows, don't take this personally, is not, that is the most beautiful outfit I've ever seen. Yeah, you never get that. No, what follows don't take this personally, is you're not very you good at this. tonight. <laughs> Right. Yeah, don't take this. Pre- of course, I'll take that personally. Yeah. Right. But um, yeah. So yeah, I've, people have said that to me before. And you just know that what's coming after it is not going to be an accolade. Well, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about last week was the importance of language, the importance of words and phrases. We just got off um, a discussion with Julie Keck, who joined us from Chicago, where we discuss labels and how we communicate who we are through words. Well, you know, we do the same thing with feelings, and sometimes we can masquerade those feelings as something that sounds like it's supposed to be helpful for the other person, but when in fact it's disguised as something that's maybe not so nice. Yeah, and it's such a lousy disguise. I mean, if you're going to disguise things, get better at it, you know? It's, um, I don't, I'm trying to think how you would get better at it, or just be more direct. I think it's being more direct. I think it's also... Well, I also think there's a spectrum of these phrases. There's don't take this personally, which to me just sounds like it's going to be bad. Like don't take this personally, but we're moving but, you off the project. Don't take this personally, but I don't want to see you anymore. It's not you. It's not it's you. It's me. me. <laughs> don't take this personally, don't but take it's this you. Personally, but it's you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Thank you. Let's try to stop yourself. Yeah, and I think those sayings and then and then the other side of the spectrum is when you think you're trying to be straight to your point. You're trying to be straight with someone. So you say something like to tell you the truth. Hmm. Or, to be honest with you, to speak frankly. Like how are you talking otherwise? Like yeah. are you just what is your what <laughs> what are you generally saying that you know you're you're not talking 
the truth. Yeah. To, well, you're saying to somebody to be to be honest with you means that to speak straight with you. Well, it doesn't it sound like I'm going to be honest this time? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The, to be honest with you, what what why wouldn't you be anything but? Yeah. You know, you're, you're opening it up that there's another option. There's another option, and that's that I'm not honest with you. Yeah. So that's another thing people say. You know, why don't you just say, I'm not lying to you this time. Yeah, I'm not lying. <laughs> don't take this personally. Right. But this time I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It, and it's you. And, right, right. Yeah, it'd be pretty funny if you just kind of, it would be an interesting, you talk about words. Well, I um, think it's interesting, too, is how young those phrases are instilled. You know, I'm just thinking about myself as a dad. And I've got a five-year-old and a two-year-old, and I've got a five-year-old who would say, don't take this personally, but, and maybe it's the but. Well, there's always a but. Yeah, but. There's always a but after don't take this personally. Well, there's, the, yeah, that's true. Yeah, always after don't take Usually, this personally. Don't, well, not maybe uh, the word always. Where there's like not it. a but is with a phrase that you cringe at, which is everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Don't worry, everything happens for a reason. Yeah, it's not one of my favorite uh it's not one of my favorite phrases. There are reasons for that. I think why I don't like the saying is because I think it's used mostly to try to explain away negative things that happen to you rather than take the responsibility for why it possibly happened. Yeah. You know, so you'd when you say, here's where you wouldn't use that expression. So when you say that to yourself, you mean, well, everything happens for a reason. Well, you, well, you do. You, you know, it's, oh, gee, I, uh, I lost my job. Um, you know, I might get evicted from my uh, apartment. Ah, uh, well, everything happens for a reason. Yeah, everything Well, happens. the reason is you never showed up for work. You were always late. And you didn't pay your rent on time. And, you know, there are all kinds of reasons why this happened. So when you don't usually say that to someone or yourself is when it's great news, you know, such as, you know, wow, my, my kid just graduated top honors and was accepted, early acceptance to Stanford. Ah, everything happens for a reason. Yeah, it doesn't happen that way. <laughs> it doesn't way. happen that yeah. way. What <laughs> happens is, oh, my son was thrown out of school. They dismissed him. They you know, th threw him out. And, well, everything happens for a reason. Well, we know, again, people, we know the reason. Robert, just I'm banging the table. We know the reason. He didn't show up for class. You know, he, didn't, he wasn't there. You know, or maybe you didn't pay the bill. You know, I'm not sure what the reason was, but I, I actually wrote about that one years ago. I was just thinking about how, because people say it a lot. You know, people say that a lot when they're just mm -hmm. trying to, I think it's sort of just not taking responsibility for why something happened. You know, it's easier to say, you know, everything happens for a reason than maybe to do something about uh, why it happened. So, yeah, that's that's one that really gets me. There's another one that, uh, what do you think about this one, Rob? This is a good one, too. Somebody says something to you that's, eh, I don't know, maybe a little biting or maybe a little whatever. And then the next thing they say when they see the look on your face of hurt or whatever it is, not joy, and they go, oh, just kidding. I was just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, just kidding is a big one. I, I, yeah. Just kidding. Yeah, I think just kidding is. Oh, we talked about this a little bit before. I think just kidding. You've got the, you've got the type of phrases that are meant to comfort you or comfort someone else, but get misused or usually don't land the right way. So everything happens for a reason. You know, don't take this personally. Uh, you know, to tell you the truth. <laughs> These things are meant to be where I always hear them. I, I think when someone says just kidding, what they're really saying is, oh, my God, I just said something awful, but I'm just trying to cover it up quickly because I don't want you to think that I'm a terrible person. But you sounded like a terrible person. And it, that also happens with calm down. You know, when you're telling someone to calm down, like calm down. And you know how you, you know how that feels as someone who's suffers from anxiety is that when someone's telling you to calm down it's almost the worst thing they can say instead of asking what's going on they say calm down and they're trying to do something but really what they want you to do is stop mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. stop because you're perseverating on something and it's starting to get old and i i really think you're taking this too far and you immediately say don't tell me how to feel don't tell me what to think yeah, and it also sounds like what you're saying about that say the person that said calm down wants it to stop and they it sounded like they're making it about themselves Correct. because if it's bothering you're bothering me 
with your anxiety. You're bothering me. So rather than, you know, let me just throw this calm down, calm down. The end of that sentence is you're annoying me, you know, rather yeah. than what you were saying is to say to somebody, hey, you seem anxious. Is everything yeah. okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what are the you talk about words right you talk about words and i am certainly uh, you know didn't get the communication award in relationships um i don't have any of them hanging around the kitchen what would that award show look like uh i i don't nominated know. for worst communication in the kitchen <laughs> right goes to so calm down sets someone up to be somewhat defensive and they don't like their anxiety anyway. They don't like it. And now they know you don't like it. Right? Yeah. So it makes it a double dip. And now it's a double dip. I don't like it. You don't like it. This isn't good. Whereas, are you okay? Is everything okay? Just calms everything down. Will it will most likely immediately calm everything down. So, you know, how we yeah, just how we just it's you know, there's no question about it. Um, yeah, being given a, a being given an opportunity to to talk about it is even if you decide not to, it's it's a it's a good thing to be heard, to right. feel like you're being heard. Absolutely. As we'd all want to be heard. Yeah. Uh you know, if we go back to don't take it personally, right? And that's just words. Don't take it personally. Mm-hmm. Right away, I think the person that you're saying that to, his shoulders are going back a little bit, and they might their body language is like getting ready. They're getting ready for what I'm not supposed to take personally, which I'm going to take personally, which you mean for me to take personally. Yeah, right? yeah. All of the above. So you could maybe, maybe have said, you know, I'd like to talk to you about something, you know? Not don't take it personally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like if I, you know, if I'm not supposed to take it personally, why don't you tell him? Yeah, and you know, tell my the, neighbor. Yeah, one thing I have found too is that I I know in advance. Y- you do know the people in your life, who, you share that type of information with, like you know, um, you know, some when you're when you are anxious and you're really feeling something, you you kind of know the person who's going to tell you to calm down. So it's best to maybe avoid that person in that moment during your peak anxiety yeah absolutely not all the time but during peak anxiety they just don't do well with it and who knows why maybe they suffer from anxiety so and they're in a good place so while they're in a good place and then you come into their circle you know into their into their sphere and you're high anxiety or you're not doing well or you're not feeling good about yourself sometimes people just don't want to hear it they want you know, they want the fun you, they want the happy you, that's who they're most comfortable with. But when you give them the not so happy version of yourself, they just don't do great there. And I think that's why people come out, you know, you've got certain people for certain things. Um, You know, there's the person who's just there for you, highly supportive. You said last week, the person that um, is a safe place to fall. And then the second person tries their best to say the right thing, but they're not a professional. But they're do- they'll say something like, um, "Everything they they are the everything happens for a reason, friend," because it it's it's comforting. You know, it's the same thing you hear from a priest. So you know, you you kind of take that and say, "Yes, everything does happen for a reason," and you know, there's. There, there are there are reasons things go this way, pre- and then the third person is just avoid them. The, the priest says that I. Oh yeah, no, it's the first thing. Oh, a religious anything says things happen for a reason. What what are things? Oh okay. There was a plan for you, and you, you didn't know about it. Oh, I can see where the two of those kind of go can go hand in hand. Oh yeah, I, I mean, see what I, you're talking. Yeah, about. no, I think they're they're I think they're symbiotic. Yeah, I think everything happens for a reason. Actually, its its roots are in are in religion, Mm -hmm. you know, that there's a plan Mm -hmm. for you. But the difference, the difference that I hear in the two is that when you say everything happens for a reason, you are backing out of the responsibility of what happened and why it happened. You won't take credit for that. Oh, totally. When you say it yourself, right? I think when you say it to yourself, yourself, when someone says it to you, they're telling you that there is a higher plan for you. Agreed. Good point. So I think it's, um, so I think, you know, everything happens for a reason, depending on who says it, 
it, it's a good thing. I, it's not a bad thing to say to somebody else. And sometimes n- none of this is, you know, this no. horrible. Ter- We're not saying you're a terrible person because you've said. Just kidding. No, but I think from if I, you know, from a coaching perspective, I think it's it's good to, you know, these these phrases, these sayings that we say a lot. I think the next time you hear them, you hear yourself saying them, or you hear yourself hearing them, you know, you notice them. I should say. Uh, you know, it's, it would be good to kind of try to give it some context. You know, why am I telling this person to calm down? Or why is this person telling me to calm down? Or I just told somebody everything happens for a reason. Or I just said, you know, to be honest with you. So I, I think it would be really fun if any of our listeners who experience this or even tomorrow or this afternoon or next week, you know, somebody says something like that, one of these phrases to you. I would love it if you would uh, go to the website and just write like a little bit of a paragraph about what happened and what the situation was and why that that phrase, why that sentence, those uh, words were used. You can also go to our Instagram accounts, uh, 12 Pound Podcast, or uh, myself, Robert Morier, or Bobby Morier, and direct message us. We would love to hear. Yeah, that. your opinion. Or if you have a different opinion on these, you know, calm down, just kidding things that people say. I'd like to hear a different opinion. You, you may completely disagree with everything we're saying. <laughs> and that's yeah, fine, too. And that's fine, too. To tell you the truth. I love that. We, yeah, we yeah, love to that. To tell you the truth, we love that. <laughs> don't take it personally, but yeah, we think you're wrong. Don't, <laughs> yeah, don't take it. And, <laughs> oh, calm down. Yeah. Oh, we're just kidding. <laughs> we're just kidding. <laughs> It's a very motivational ring. You think so? I do. It's like you're about to finish a race. It feels like chariots fire. I think it's just a standard. I think it is. Well, yeah. it's a positive standard. It's a standard. One well, of your standard hits. Don't take it personally, uh, but don't let that happen again. <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest, you could have done better. Calm down, Robert. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> hey, don't worry. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so if you hear any of these sayings... Don't take it too personally if somebody tells you to calm down because it's probably something that they're hearing that's maybe and, triggering. And, you them. know, I think, too, if if a relationship is strong enough, then you would be able to say to someone what that feels like when you're told to calm down. You know, I'd like to extend now an apology to everyone that's ever been, you know, in my life that the communication has gone south. Apology you know. accepted. <laughs> I feel like we could move on. <laughs> it was a big, that's good. That was a big moment. On big the moment for, podcast. big moment for me. Mom big, apologizing. Yeah. For big her moment. communication. Lack of challenges. Right, right. We all have them. That's for sure. That's for sure. It's, um, we're all a work in progress. Yeah. And with that, you know, as you are communicating with your, your friends and your family and your loved ones, uh, and since this is the end of the summer, you may want to do some communication up on the boardwalk. And if you do go to the boardwalk, check out Maury's Piers located on the boardwalk in Wildwood, New Jersey. And again, we will be up on the boardwalk. We have some free boardwalk and water park passes left. But we will be back next week uh, to talk to you some more uh, as we continue this journey uh, with the podcast. We are really excited to be able to share with you what we hear, what we think, what we feel. And then more importantly, we'd like to hear from you. So as we had mentioned before, our website, www.12poundpodcast.com, you can ask a question or submit your own story. We would love to hear from you uh, as we would love to hear some of these things that you also hear. Don't take it personally. Everything happens for a reason. To tell you the truth. Just kidding. Calm down. And, uh, and we, we, love, uh, we love doing this, and we love doing it here with you. So with that, we will say goodbye. Bye, everybody. Lucy of the Margate Sands She's made of dreams and old tin cans She's no diamond feathers But she shines the same With skin just like an ollie book There's no getting through to her She loves everyone Don't matter whence they came And if she were but not so grand And I could set her in a ring I would put her on your finger And when I took your hand I'd sing la-dee-da-dee-da I'd sing la-dee-da-dee-da 
Well, it ain't much, I know But we can take her with us anywhere we go With Lucy on your hand, you won't grow old There's a singer up the road Somewhere round about three holes